let's talk about uh, a looming consequence of what's happened, which is the budget. In Minnesota, our constitution uh, forbids us from having a deficit. And we've seen the budget situation uh, flip from having a surplus of 1.3 billion to most likely being in a deficit, which will become clear next week when we get the budget forecast. What are your thoughts about how we handle the uh, budget deficit we're likely to face at a time when spending uh, in this crisis appears to be imperative? So when, when the governor ordered the first shelter in place, um, I knew the consequences to our economy would be, would be great. And so I've had some great conversations with the commissioner of MMB um, about doing hiring freezes, renegotiating uh, contracts, thinking about how do we position ourselves for uh, a likely deficit uh, next year. It, it's not even likely anymore. Everybody says it's gonna be a deficit. Uh, we're gonna get some numbers in May, but they're actually gonna uh, do another budget forecast in August. That will be a much more accurate picture. May is, is not gonna be all that accurate because if we delay some of the taxes that are due, which is something I hope we get done, uh, the numbers aren't gonna be clear, but it's gonna be extremely difficult. And you, you all across um, the industry and sectors, you see University of Minnesota making some adjustments, Mayo Clinic making adjustments, the state, it has now done a hiring freeze, and so they're, you know, they're figuring out ways to bend the spending curve. And so it's going to be really difficult. I had one uh, budget that we were six billion dollars in the hole in November. It start, then it went to five billion dollars in the hole, and that was extremely difficult. Well, what if we're eight to ten billion dollars short? What would that look like? And so it's going to be a very, very difficult job next year. I, I want to make sure we keep the majority so that we have a bipartisan solution, but uh, it, it's not going to be easy. Minnesota, uh, over a number of years, has built up a strategic reserve. Uh, it's about two and a half billion. Yeah. Um, do you expect to use that to fill this gap? Yes. Yeah, I, I think uh, if you look at the, the budget reserves, that was a, a bipartisan um, uh, decision. I really, I think Rod Scoy, uh, who's no longer, he was the tax chair Democrat, uh, I think was the leading force behind that. But that's in place, which is really good to, for us right now. It was meant for a rainy day. Well, next year is going to be a rainy day. And I think that the, the Myron Franz and MMB did a hiring freeze. It, it, it basically allows us to begin to bend that curve ahead of time. And that, that was really smart. I mean, it, it positions us in a good place. State contracts, um, you know, they were uh, negotiated and the, the first raise came last July. And we're now supposed, if, if we approve the contract in the next three weeks or so, they get another raise this July. And so I'm, I'm saying, I think they should renegotiate that. I'm willing to have a compromise on that, but renegotiating that would save hundreds and hundreds of millions of dollars. And so each little piece that we think about is just critical right now. And so it is, you know, it's a crisis, but in a crisis, there is an opportunity to, to rethink how we do things, how we do government, how we do business, local governments. I'm asking them to, to pay attention to their budgets because they shouldn't expect a big new revenue source from the state next year.